Hey guys, welcome back to Gatsu Gaming. Uh, today we're going to talk about something that I actually haven't touched on too much at all or even really talked about in my videos, uh, and that is the Retribution Paladin. Um, I spent a little bit of time playing this here at level 120. Uh, it was not the experience I thought it would be. Um, I had heard a lot of varying things about it maybe being too slow or just feeling really awkward without Wake of Ash's baseline. And while I did end up taking that most of the time, um, I found there were actually quite a few interesting builds, so let's hop right in. So first up here are our talents. Uh, ignore my PvP talents, I don't even know what these do, I just clicked them so there'd be something there. We'll just close that out. Alright, so looking at our level 15 here, uh, we have Zeal. Uh, Zeal makes your judgment and uh, give you a buff that causes your next three auto attacks to occur 50% faster and deal an additional bit of holy damage. Now this damage does scale with Paladin's new mastery, um, so this does definitely scale with your gear. Um, this is really useful while you're leveling, um, and it's actually pretty useful when you're running dungeons as well. Um, it really comes down to a playstyle choice as to what you're going to take here in the first row, and at this point not really a damage number difference to be honest. Uh, Righteous Verdict. Uh, Templar's Verdict increases the damage of your next Templar's Verdict by 15% for 6 seconds. So this just gives you uh, a little bit of synergy with Divine Purpose, which is still in the game, as well as whenever you have a lot of Holy Power generation or maybe some Azerite traits that may make it easier to spam Templar's Verdict, that you can get some really powerful strings in during your wings. Um, this is definitely the talent you want to pick when you are looking for a 100% pure single target environment, uh, just because you're going to get the most out of it in that situation. Execution Sentence is actually a little different. Uh, it now actually costs Holy Power. It's no longer just something you fire and forget, as it was in previous expansions. Uh, it calls down uh, the Light's Punishment. Uh, upon an enemy target, dealing a pretty sizable amount of holy damage and increasing the target's holy damage taken from your attacks by 20% for 12 seconds. What this execu what execution sentence essentially does for you is basically give you, um, it, it sort of retains that, uh, we'll say, Colossus Smash style um, a play that we had during Legion uh, without being completely neutered by the mastery. Uh, now this, of course, will also scale with your mastery, because your mastery is increased holy damage. Um, so any one of these is a fairly good choice. It really comes down to personal preference at this point due to tuning. Um, so, you know, you can definitely have some fun with it at the moment. We'll have to see how it pans out in the future, but right now they all actually performed pretty similarly for me. The level 30 row here, uh, we have Fires of Justice. Uh, this reduces the cooldown of Crusader Strike by 15% and grants it a 15% chance to make your next ability consume one less holy power. Um, this is something that I know I was taking early on. I shifted away from this over to Hammer of Wrath because I wanted to have the Execute available to me, because most groups I ran with uh, just didn't have one, and Hammer of Wrath is really cool and I'm glad it's back. Um, so that's why I used this for a little bit and then I swapped. Uh, Blade of Wrath, um, this has been changed slightly here. Art of War now resets the cooldown of Blade of Justice by 100%, or sorry, it reduces its, uh, rather, it resets the cooldown of Blade of Justice 100% more often, uh, and its damage is increased by 25%. So what this does is it doubles what Art of War does for you, and increases the damage that you get from it. So a huge buff to your Blade of Wrath, which makes it probably your highest priority period when it comes to Holy Power generation. Um, there's a lot of people that do enjoy this playstyle, but they did move some of what was on the talent back into the baseline, which is a very good change. Um, and then the final one here, of course, is Hammer of Wrath. Everyone's favorite execute is finally back for Paladin. Uh, Hammer of Wrath has a 30-yard range. It is affected by haste as far as its standard cooldown there. Um, is is basically the execute it is only usable uh, whenever the target has less than 20% health or while you're empowered with Avenging Wrath. So whenever you have Avenging Wrath on your opener, this is added to your rotation. It does generate true holy power and it hits very, very hard compared to your other abilities. 
Uh, the 45 row here, we have Fist of Justice. This remains, um, I believe this is pretty similar here. The duration that it removes off the cooldown might be slightly lower now. Uh, but each Holy Power spent reduces the remaining cooldown on Hammer of Justice by two seconds. Um, judgment should be used literally on cooldown. Um, there is very, 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 uh, very, very little chance that you wouldn't use that. Um, and this, of course, is... Oh, it's every Holy Power spent now instead of whenever your judgment is used. That's why it was so different and why it was changed. Um, it actually makes your... Uh, Hammer of Justice or Fist of Justice, depending on the talent. You, well, now, now this is it. And look at that. I've screwed up. Hooray for not scripting beforehand! Alright, so Repentance. Uh, this is just that standard incapacitate for one minute on a 15 second cooldown with a cast time. Usable against humanoids, demons, undead, dragonkin, and giants. Um, I've seen most of these enemy types so far. Uh, and it has definitely been useful on a couple of pools where I just needed to lock out one particular mob in a pool to make it survivable for the tank in a mythic. Uh, very, very powerful ability to have, and some utility that you're definitely going to want to keep in mind for Mythic Plus moving forward. Uh, Blinding Light here, this is probably going to be our least taken talent, just because Repentance is going to be so useful in the early days. Uh, Blinding Light, 1600 mana, one and a half minute cooldown. Uh, you basically just explode in light, you blind everything around you within 10 yards, causing them to wander disoriented for 6 seconds. Uh, Non-holy damage will break that disorient effect. Um, this is essentially used as an AoE interrupt of sorts for most people. Um, it will work very well in Mythic Plus if you do not have one available to you. Uh, most of the time, though, you are going to want to go with either Repentance or Fist of Justice if you do not need this. Um... I myself am just a huge fan of Fist of Justice because I am soloing most of the time. So the level 60 row is a little different. Um, as you'll see here, Consecration is in this row now. Uh, 20 second CD. Consecrates the land beneath you, causing about 7,000 holy damage over 6 seconds to the enemies who enter the area. And it does generate you a holy power when you use it. Which is really cool and really awesome. Um, I haven't had much of a need for Consecration, mainly because I've either gone with either Divine Judgment on the left of it, or Wake of Ashes on the right, because I feel like Consecration is pretty much the one you take when you're going to be just constantly dealing with a, just a boatload of adds, and you're not going to be moving too much. Uh, otherwise, uh, I feel like your better options would be either Wake of Ashes or Divine Judgment. Uh, speaking of Wake of Ashes, it is back as a talent. We did lose the artifact ability, so they moved it here. Uh, it is slightly nerfed here. It's a 45 second cooldown. Uh, it deals about 10,000. It says Radiant Damage, which is basically pure damage, so to speak. There's no resistances or anything. Um, it's all enemies within 12 yards in front of you and reduces our movement speed by 50% for 5 seconds. Demons and undead enemies are also stunned for 5 seconds and it generates 5 Holy Power. Uh, this is incredibly useful in places like Waycrest Manor and the Underrot, where you're going to run into some undead mobs, um, potentially some demons as well. So Wake of Ashes will definitely have its uses out just outside of your standard rotation filler. Uh, there are some instances where Wake of Ashes is not optimal, which is very surprising, uh, but is also welcome because it makes this row have something more than one choice, which is something we're trying to get away from in general anyway. Uh, so Divine Judgment here, the last one in the row. Uh, each enemy hit by an ability that consumes Holy Power increases the damage of your next Judgment by 20%, stacking up to 15 times. Um, now what I said about Consecration is also fairly true for Divine Judgment. This one just requires a little bit more management when it comes to your Holy Power and a little bit of restraint hitting your Judge Key. Um, your Judgment can do an incredibly large amount of damage. 20 times 15 is a big, big number. Uh, definitely love to see that. That's, you know, let's see here. Hmm, 5 times 2, 100, so 300% judgment damage. That seems pretty good to me. Um, will make your judgment hit incredibly hard, uh, but of course is only really a doable thing when you're going to be having constant AoE where you're going to be using Divine Storm. Um, so do keep that in mind if you take this talent that you're going to be kind of uh, reserving your judgments for whenever they're very empowered. 
Uh, 75 right here, this is movement slash survivability. Uh, we have Cavalier here, Divine Steed just has two charges. This is my default choice nine times out of ten, uh, just because playing catch up with the tank is never really all that fun, uh, especially when you're running with Demon Hunter tanks and monks like I normally do. Uh, Unbreakable Spirit just reduces the cooldown of Divine Shield, Shield of Vengeance, and Lay on Hands by 30%. If you're not going to have any sort of movement issues, uh, maybe you have the speed potions, or you're running with a tank that is a Demon Hunter or a monk that's just charging forward recklessly, uh, Unbreakable Spirit is great just to have those extra defenses when you need them. Uh, definitely useful on higher keys where you definitely will need an extra Divine Shield occasionally or a Shield of Vengeance just a little bit quicker. Uh, eye for an Eye, uh, this is typically what I've been taking in uh, when I'm out in the world questing. Um, it just gives you a 35% reduced physical damage buff, and it, it deals damage to any melee attacker for 10 seconds. Um, this is significantly less powerful than it was in Legion, as far as I know. Um, still pretty decent when you're soloing. It does add a little bit of damage, especially when you're fighting those elites, and you just need that little bit extra defensive with a little bit of offense thrown in as well. Um, a very useful talent, uh, but will typically be overshadowed by Unbreakable Spirit or Cavalier when you're running Mythic Plus just for their utility for yourself. Uh, level 90 row is a healing row, and this is where it gets very interesting for Ret Paladins' this expansion. Um, there is a Paladin by the name of Sound Effects. I believe at this point he is on, I think it's Area 52 Dark Spear. Uh, rated with him for a while, and we were talking about how we always wanted Holy Paladins to have kind of like that off-heal role. I'm oh, sorry, Ret Paladins have that kind of off-heal role. Um, you know, be able to actually utilize some healing um, to really help out and be like almost like a bard, so to speak. You know, the support role, uh, if their damage is not going to be as strong sometimes. Uh, and this row definitely accomplishes that. Uh, selfless Healer. Your Holy Power Spending abilities reduce the cast time of your next Flash of Light by 25%, and increase its healing done by 10%, stacks up to 4 times. So that gives you a 100% instant cast time on Flash of Light, and makes it heal for 40% more. Um, this stacks up super quick, it's very, very useful and really helpful to the healer when there's heavy damage going on. Um, it is actually really solid when you are going and you're soloing, just because you don't have to worry about absolutely anything, it's completely passive, and you know you're always going to have a flash up at the end of your combat. Uh, Justicar's Vengeance is another very, very strong choice uh, if you're going to be running around solo or sometimes in dungeons, depending on what the encounter requires. Uh, it does cost you 5 Holy Power, focuses Holy Energy to deliver a powerful weapon strike that deals about 5200 Holy Damage, uh, which I believe is actually less than Hammer of Wrath. Yes, it's slightly less than Hammer of Wrath. Um, and it restores health equal to the damage done. Uh, damage is increased by 50% when the target is stunned. So whenever you pair this in conjunction with Fist of Justice and you're using Hammer of Judgment out when you're questing, uh, Justicar's Vengeance while leveling is incredibly useful and it hits like a freight train when it's getting that extra 50% on top of your mastery that also increases the damage of this. Um, very powerful ability. It's one of your only offensive ways to heal, if that makes sense. Um, However, I believe that most likely the default choice when you're running a Mythic Plus is going to be the new Word of Glory. Uh, Word of Glory is incredibly strong. Um, this is 3 Holy Power, 40 yard range, 1 minute recharge, you have 2 charges to start with. Um, it heals a friendly target and the two most injured targets within 30 yards, and it says here for 26,154. Um, this is affected, of course, by your crit, uh, your versatility, etc., and Word of Glory is nuts. Uh, whenever we were taking a ton of damage in one of the mythics we were running, we used Word of Glory, or rather, I used Word of Glory to help the healer out on the final boss of a tall Dazar, where there's a lot of uh, group damage going out that, although it is mostly avoidable, you're going to get the occasional hiccup where someone's going to step on a spider, or, you know, run through a ground effect, or just get clipped by some effect going on, uh, and Word of Glory almost immediately topped uh, a third of the, you know, a little over half the group up. Um, this is incredibly strong, and whenever you go and you pair it with Wake of Ashes, what you can actually do is pop your first one, pop Wake of Ashes, pop the second one, 
and for the most part, your entire group is at full HP at that point. Um, this is almost a group heal reset at this gear level that I'm at, which is very low. I'm only about 320 item level as Rhett. Um, I cannot get over how strong Word of Glory is. I really hope they keep this as is, because Rhett Paladins are not only doing fairly solid damage, um, they're also fulfilling that support role in a group. They bring a lot of utility, and Word of Glory is definitely part of that. Uh, the last row here, this is our sort of big CD slash big damage row. Um, these are the big choices. Um, to start with here, we have Divine Purpose. Your abilities that consume holy power have a 15% chance to make your next ability that consumes holy power free, uh, as well as deal 20% increased damage and healing. Divine Purpose, when paired with Righteous Verdict, is a huge boost to your Templar's Verdict damage, especially whenever you proc a couple in a row. Um, this is very, very strong and will typically be what you want to go for um, in a raid encounter where you don't need the burst and the extra stats from Crusade, as they have nerfed Crusade significantly moving into BFA. Uh, now, Crusade here replaces your Avenging Wrath, of course. Uh, still the same 2-minute CD. Uh, so what happens is it increases your damage done in haste by 3% for 25 seconds. Each holy power you spend during Crusade increases the damage done in haste by an additional 3%. Um, so what this is going to do for you uh, is it's going to go ahead and stack up to a full 30% damage and healing over the duration of it, as long as you can get that up fairly quickly. Um, there's a couple of issues with, Crus with Crusade right now when compared to Divine Purpose and the other talent that I've chosen here, Inquisition, um, in that it does give you some really reliable heavy burst. Unfortunately, there is a build time, so it does require a little bit of planning beforehand. However, Crusade remains a very strong choice for those that are used to using it and can perform well with it. Um, but again, it does involve a little bit more planning than some people may be comfortable with. Uh, Inquisition is what I chose to go with here. This is probably the most boring of the talents. Uh, I tend to go for these sometimes just because I am all about consistency, um, and this definitely helps out there. Uh, Inquisition, 1 to 3 Holy Power. Um, it consumes up to 3 Holy Power to increase your damage done in haste by 8%. Uh, that does not scale, that is just a flat 8% damage done in haste. Uh, you can keep this buff up nearly all the time. Uh, it lasts 15 seconds per holy power consumed, and it does pandemic up to a minute. So what that means is you can use three holy power every minute to ensure that you always have Inquisition up. Um, is this the best talent choice? Um, probably not. Um, this is probably the weakest of the three in the row. However, it is also the most consistent, which is why I prefer it. Um, again, this bottom row, every talent here is excellent and can be used very well and is very, very strong when played with the proper talents paired with it. Um, and with, of course, proper planning in the case of Crusade and uh, a few other talents there like Divine Judgment. Uh, taking a quick look in the spellbook here, not much has changed for Rhett Paladin. Uh, we still have Avenging Wrath as the baseline. This is uh, a quick increase to damage, healing, and critical strike chance by 20% for 20 seconds. Uh, now keep in mind that whenever you go to Crusade, you do not get that critical strike chance. You only get the haste and the damage. So that is something that you will have to think about when you're talking about what stats you want. Um, this is something I've noticed that a lot of people that are talking about Rhett Paladin right now have not noticed, and for whatever reason are not talking about. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just click on Crusade real quick here. And you see it swaps over here, uh, and it does not mention that crit anywhere on that tooltip. So that is something that is definitely worth keeping in mind, um, that Crusade may be better once you have a good bit more crit, because you'll be getting the haste, which will be more favorable. Um, but before then, do keep that in mind while you're gearing and leveling. Uh, so back to Inquisition there. Uh, Blade of Justice, 9.6 second cooldown, scales with haste. Uh, this is your 12 yard range, uh, fairly heavy physical damage, two holy point generator. Um, this should be your top priority in your damage rotation as far as your holy generation goes, as long as you will not overcap um, 
your holy power. If that would happen, it is definitely okay to hold this for a second, you know, just to make sure you don't waste it, because obviously you don't want to waste holy power if you can avoid it, uh, but at the same time, don't delay it too long, because then you will simply be losing damage. Uh, we still have Blessing of Freedom here, just blesses a party or raid member, granting immunity to movement impairing effects for 8 seconds. Uh, there's a lot of snares, a lot of roots that will happen to you in these dungeons. Blessing of Freedom is going to be very, very useful for a lot of people. Uh, expect to see this a lot and definitely keep it on a comfortable keybind. Uh, also on a comfortable keybind is definitely Blessing of Protection. Um, it does have a five minute cooldown again after the changes into BFA where we lost the artifact weapon so we've also lost the cooldown reduction we had on it. Uh, Blessing of Protection is incredibly useful and in quite a few fights in Freehold um, as well as one or two other dungeons which I can't remember the mechanics specifically or the bosses uh, but I know I've used it to save healers here and there just because of the amount of damage that does go out in dungeons right now. Uh, we can cleanse toxins, we can remove poison and disease effects. Uh, make sure this is also easily accessible, there's a lot of debuffs to cleanse, and we have to make sure, moving into Mythic Plus, that we are able to clear off debuffs, um, and are definitely doing that as DPS, because there's a lot of healers that will need your help this time around, just because these debuffs are nasty. Uh, Crusader Strike here, this is your standard bread and butter, probably lowest priority, uh, Holy Power Generator. It's super boring, it hits like a noodle, um, but it is still very important to utilize so that you get that holy power out there. Obviously, with Fires of Justice, this gets a little bit stronger because it is giving you something else on top of the damage. Um, but of course, you're going to hit this no matter what because you have to, you have no choice. Uh, Divine Shield, 5 minute cooldown, grants immunity to all damage and harmful effects for 8 seconds. Cannot be used if you have Forbearance, of course, if you use LOH on yourself, uh, or if you accidentally bopped yourself like I have on occasion this week. Um, so keep that in mind, of course, if you're planning on cheesing mechanics, make sure you don't accidentally have forbearance, or that someone has trolled you by LOHing you instead. Uh, Divine Seed here, your standard movement speed, uh, gives you a 3 second boost of 100% movement speed. This is usable while indoors or in combat. There are some bugs in beta right now where if you use it in certain areas, it just won't actually happen, and you'll just kind of stand in place and look like an idiot. Um, hopefully those will be ironed out very shortly. Uh, Divine Storm, 3 Holy Power, Instant Unleashes World of Divine Energy, dealing 3100 Holy Damage to all nearby enemies. Uh, your standard AoE Fare, what you spend your, uh, your Holy Power on when you need to do AoE. Uh, super Strong, there are quite a few Azerite traits that buff this and give you buffs for doing uh, damage to mobs that are lower than 20% HP with Divine Storm. Uh, there's one that's like 1100 Strength, I believe for using it on stuff that's below 20% HP. Um, so you'll definitely see a ton of use out of your Azerite gear empowering Divine Storm and Templar's Verdict this time around. So we have Flash of Light here, uh, 11,000 heal. This is basically our, oh shit, we're out of combat. I need to heal myself, heal. Um, yep, yeah, that's all it does. Uh, Greater Blessing of Kings just gives you an Absorb Shield or gives you an hour buff to toss on to say your tank. Um, for an hour, gives you a 3,000 Absorb Shield, which does not seem like a whole lot. However, after the stat squish, it is incredibly powerful and incredibly useful. It's actually really good utility, too. Uh, if you want to be every healer's best friend, give them Blessing of Wisdom. 1% max health and mana every 10 seconds uh, is surprisingly strong, and will just help that Resto Druid in your Mythic Plus group not go oom um as often. You know, or the Mistweaver, or the Priest because actually all the healers are doing really well. But that's another topic for another time. Uh, page 2 here. Uh, Hammer of Justice still stuns the target for 6 seconds. This is one of the few long stuns remaining in the game. Uh, it does only have a 10-yard range, of course. Uh, you'll be using this a lot. Super, super useful. Uh, Hammer of Wrath is a Town. We already covered that. Hand of Hindrance. 70% uh, movement snare for a single target. Uh, this is incredibly great whenever you really need to make sure your tank can get away from that necrotic mob. A lot of people forget they have this as Ret. Um, it does have a pretty lengthy 30 second cooldown, but is very, very good whenever you need it at doing what it's supposed to do, which is getting things away from you or getting you away from other things in conjunction with your, uh, your Divine Steed. Uh, we still have our Taunt, Hand of Reckoning. This is super useful with Seagulls and Eye of Ashara. Uh, there are Ravens in Waycrest Manor that do the same thing, so you'll probably want to taunt those as well, so keep this somewhere close by. Um, shouldn't have to use it too much, hopefully, though. 
Uh, standard judgment here, this has been changed slightly, moving into BFA. Uh, it now has a much lengthier 11 second cooldown, it does scale with haste, judges the target dealing holy damage, that scales with mastery, and causes them to take 25% increased damage from your next ability that costs holy power. Um, so keep that in mind when you're getting ready to hit that big Templar's verdict. Um, you don't necessarily want to make your first Templar's verdict hit with judgment, uh, you'll probably want it to be that second one that's empowered by Righteous Verdict if you're running that talent. Um, so do keep in mind there is that new caveat there that was not there previously. Uh, Lay on Hands, uh, of course, the amazing... Oh my god, I'm gonna save you! Yes! Lay on Hands, still here, of course. Uh, back up to that 10-minute cooldown there, can be reduced by 30% on that cooldown with Unbreakable Spirit. Um, this can save so many groups so many times. Um, definitely be sure this is somewhere easy to get to. Uh, so here we have Rebuke, Standard, uh, Interrupt. It actually is actually not Standard anymore. This is a 4-second lockout for spells as opposed to 3, as it is for most classes. I hadn't noticed that till just now. Uh, it does have a 15-second CD, um, so definitely be sure that you know, you're making sure you coordinate everything with your group so you don't overlap. Uh, Redemption. Uh, go ahead and res that guy that died last pool like a noob instead of bubbling like a good paladin. Uh, Shield of Vengeance, um, hopefully this will scale much better now than it did in Legion. I know it didn't scale much in Legion from what I've been told. Um, just gives you that awesome, huge, huge Absorb Shield, which will let you solo all kinds of elites right now that you probably shouldn't be able to. Uh, when that shield expires, it bursts to inflict holy damage equal to the total amount absorbed, divided, um, divided among all nearby enemies. Uh, super useful in AoE situations or when you know you're going to take damage, uh, just because you can get some damage out of it. This is now on the GCD, so be very careful about when you are procking this, uh, as it may lock you out of a window you're trying to stay in. Uh, Templar's Verdict is just your three holy power single target spell. Hits for moderate holy damage, of course gets buffed by Righteous Verdict. Uh, because it is holy damage, this does scale with your mastery. Uh, Wake of Ashes is a talent, so we can skip that for now. Uh, Word of Glory, also a talent. So here we have Art of War. Your auto attacks have a chance to reset the cooldown of Blade of Justice. There is no percentage listed here on purpose, um, because they are definitely going to be tweaking this behind the scenes as they need to for tuning. Uh, you can double this with Blade of Wrath, as covered in talents. Heart of the Crusader gives you 20% faster mounted move speed. Uh, this doesn't stack with anything else, unfortunately, but it's really great to have that baseline extra move speed. Uh, so the Mastery has been reworked. It is just a flat holy damage increase now. Uh, I am significantly thrilled to see this back. I hated the Judgment window. Um, this Mastery Hand of Light gives you a lot more options when it comes to what you can do in your rotation and uh, takes away that lockout that you have of when you can do damage. Um, so your damage will be significantly more consistent as Ret now as a result. Now, we curiously still have the Retribution passive, uh, Blizzard has repeatedly said they don't balance around this, but we all know if it's here, they're going to. Uh, when any party or raid member within 40 yards dies, you gain 20% increased damage done and 30% reduced damage, damage taken for 10 seconds. Um, in 5-mans, this is incredibly strong when you know there's going to be a mechanic that will one-shot someone, and if you're prepared for it, um, you know you can, of course, make sure that whenever that person knows they're going to die, they can call out let you know. Um... You can hold wings for that and just get a huge, huge, huge amount of damage. I would love to see this Retribution passive go away or just be changed to a reduced damage taken um, or just changed to like an attack speed increase. Something Increased damage is something they're going to balance around. Um, I, I really hate that this is still here. I really hope that Blizzard gets rid of it in the near future or at the very least stops actively designing around it uh, because we all know that they are. Uh, so that is all there is to say about Ret Paladin at this point. Uh, Ret Paladin, for me, has been a really fun experience, as I said in the beginning of the video. Um, I enjoyed it. I didn't have many issues with it. Um, I never felt like I was behind in damage anywhere. Um, but I definitely felt occasionally that um, I had to wait for abilities to come up, which I'm sure will be alleviated with haste in the future. Uh, or if I, of course, picked Crusade instead of Inquisition, maybe. Um, but we'll just have to see how it plays out. So far, with the tuning we have so far in uh, the beta, they're looking pretty good for Mythic Plus. A lot of utility, a lot of power. 
Um, I expect to see a lot more Ret Paladins showing up. If you have a Ret Paladin in your group, thank them for taking Word of Glory next expansion. Uh, if you liked the video, leave it a like. If you didn't like it, hit that dislike button. Throw me a subscribe, help my channel grow. Uh, trying to get to the point where I can be monetized so that I can, uh, you know, do this sort of as a, uh, a living instead of just a hobby. Uh, but of course, that's a pipe dream because dreams never come true, right? Right. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll catch you next time. This has been Gatsu. Have a blast.